Hi guys, I am so happy to see you guys again. I finally get some time to edit videos. The job at the clinic was very intense. So uh, it took me a while to finally find time to edit my live stream last week. I made this 3D model during the live stream and it was really fun hanging out with everybody. I trimmed down the process in the live stream and making it into this short video so you guys can enjoy it. I'll be live streaming again this Thursday making a Gauji apparatus. You guys voted for it. It. so I'm going to make it live. Make sure you give a like if you find this uh, process fascinating and follow me on social media. So I look forward to seeing you at the live stream and let's get into the video. This is the first time I ever show Blender content on my channel. There will be more in the future because it seems that it's getting popular. I wouldn't call myself an expert because in my master degree, they didn't really have a module to teach us these 3D software. That's one of the reasons that I haven't made any 3D modeling related content because I just don't feel like I'm in a place to give instruction about these 3D software. I'm just going to show you guys how it looks like to work in these 3D software. It is very different from the vector graphic that we have been using. And now, extrude faces along normal. So these will be the spikes. Let me scale this down a little bit. Next through along normal again <laughs> what do you guys think about this a lot a lot is going on at the same time right yeah just very different from other illustrator and inkscape it takes more time to pick up these 3d software okay i'm adding some subdivision surface modifier there you go of the spikes oh my god my, i make the spikes so big let me get back and make them a little bit smaller otherwise they're way too big they look like mushrooms okay that's i'm more comfortable with this size uh, faces and then i can push them in to make a lichen binding side all right, all right. Look, we got our virus with the spikes and now it's time to make it pretty. Uh, first, let's shade smooth. So now it's nice and smooth. I'll go to the shade editor. Look like how intimidating this look. It's way more complicated than 2D software. It's very difficult to learn it within one hour because I want to create some rough edges on the surface. First, that's like bumps. It should go to normal. One hour a day, yeah. The prob I think it took me three days to pick up the bases. There's a really good beginner course made by Blender Guru. It's free on YouTube. It starts with making a donut. Let's see, the position to normal. Here we go. So you see that the surface, there's some like ripples on the surface. Be like, they'll become smaller. It's really subtle, but now we're having these rough edges on the surface. Let me plug it into height. There you go. <laughs> So now you see all the rough edges. It's really gross. It gives me trypophobia. We can soften them like this. It kind of looks like a really rough skin without proper skin care. And now let's put some color into the virus. Color, color ramp, yeah. Noise texture. So this is something I find really cool. You can create this very cute pixie type of color on the surface of your object. This is like a default color. And now we are, we need to decide our own color. So get this purple in there and then this blue. This looks very pathological. I can make a little bit of um, like this metallic texture. All right, that is a virus. And with the blender, we can also create some animation, but let me scale the virus down. So I'm going to rotate it and then, um, I remember it was 120 frames. I'll get a key in there again, 360 degree, of course, then I'll key it. Yeah, 
and now I can make it spin. Uh, but that that was not the direction I wanted to spin, but there you go. Blender is way more difficult than the vector graphic software that we have been using. I did not learn this while I was studying my scientific illustration master degree, but uh, I learned it later and it definitely takes way longer to for me to pick it up yes i'm almost 10k i really appreciate you guys' support support and also because i'm approaching 10k so i'm feeling like i should do something special <laughs> do something starting to do something different so yeah i'm going to make more 3d related content what do you guys think should i make them into tutorials don't you guys think it's really cool to just keep the virus spinning like this? It's not even in the... Uh, I turn the light off, but if I turn the light back on again, it looks really grainy because of the rendering rendering setting. Let me change to... If we, there you go. So this is what Blender can do, but it's really difficult to teach. There's already really good tutorial for this. Uh, for example, Blender Guru. So if you guys are interested, you can check out his content. He has this beginner theory. He teaches you how to make a donut in Blender. Thanks. And also thanks to Blender Guru. As you can see, it takes a very long time. <laughs> Each of the tutorial is on average 15 minutes. If you want to learn Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape, you can pick it up within one hour. That's not a problem at all. And also a lot of the journals, uh, they are not requ requesting 3D images. Most of them ask for graphical abstract, which is 2D flat design. So I think in a practical sense, it's not it's not that necessary. W what is the experience from you guys? But I think I will start making more 3D contents because I see that they get more views on YouTube. Also, you guys voted that you want to see Golgi Apparatus. I'm go also going to make that in Blender next week. 